Welcome back guys. So in this section, we will learn about Web App Builder. So Web App Builder, basically a way to build web apps that you can configure it and configure what tools inside this app. So as you know, there's GIS developers who create web applications using either like C Sharp or ASP.NET or JavaScript or also Python. The thing is when you write the code to create a website, you need to write all the code that define everything in the website, all the controls and everything. What's good about, about what's good about Web App Builder is that it helps you create all these controls without writing any code. So basically what Esri did, they created a tool that you can create websites using this tool, which is Web App Builder or Experience Builder. And you can build it by dragging and dropping controls you need to use in your application. And they figured out that basically any GIS application depends on a map, a base map, a web map that is published on ArcGIS server or published on ArcGIS online. And then you include this map in your web application. So any application you create using Web App Builder depends on existing web map. And then once you add your web map, you can add controls like search, like find my location, like editing, like attribute table, like so many tools that we will see inside Web App Builder when we start. So as you know, this is the homepage for ArcGIS Online organization account. So you cannot use Web App Builder unless you have ArcGIS Enterprise, which is a portal, or you have ArcGIS Online organization account. If you don't know the difference between them, go back to ArcGIS Online section so you can understand the difference between them. So if you have ArcGIS Online Organization account, or if you have ArcGIS Portal or Enterprise, you can use Web App Builder with it. So this is the home page for my ArcGIS Online Organization account. In order to create Web App application using Web App Builder, you need to have a web map first. So let's go to our content and we will create a new folder and we will call it Web App Builder. So as you should know, creating a new folder is from here. We will call it Web App Builder. I'll say OK. And now we have a new folder. What we need to do is to copy one of the data to this folder or create a new web map in this folder. So what I will do, I will go to Map. So here in the web map, when we open it, you will see that we don't have any layers or any content other than the web other than the base map. Now we will go to add search for layers in my content and I will add the layer that called electricity maintenance that we used for ArcGIS collector and ArcGIS field maps. So electricity maintenance is right here. So we will add this one and it will be added to the map. As you see here, we have some data in Atlanta that we collected before. So we can zoom to this data. We have some lines, polygons and points and we can close this one and we can save this map as a new map. We will call it Web App Builder. Web Map. And let's call it Web App Builder. Give it a tag. Summary Web App Builder. And we will save it in the folder Web App Builder. Then save this map. Now we can go back to our content. Now we can create a web application using Web App Builder by coming to this item and you go to create application here create web app and when you click on create web app you will see that you have a lot of options here and this is the web app builder so we can click on this one and it will ask us what is the name of this application so the title of this application will be electricity web app and we're gonna keep it give it summary here electricity web app save in folder web app builder okay and this is arcgis web app builder this is the first thing you will see when you create a new web application using arcgis web app builder we will go through all the items here and everything here but i want to take you to the content first and i want to show you how that was created in the folder we just created so we need you need to be able to differentiate between the items that called web app web mapping application and this is the icon for the web mapping application and this is a web map and this is the icon for the web map so you need to know that this is a web map and this is icon for web application so let's go back here and when we open it as an item <coughs> 
you will see that you have the option to view the application, edit the application, download the application, and I will describe why you can download it later, or you can share the application after you finish it. But because we didn't finish creating the application, we will go and click on edit application, and that will bring us to the same page uh, we were at when we created the application the first time. So right now it shows you the web map that we created and the data and the same extent that we saved before. Even, even when we open the layers list, you will see this is the same layers that we added. So now this is not working on a web map. The web map is used to filter the data, to configure the layer, to change symbology, to create the extent and configure what is the map looks like and what data is in the map or are in the map. But here we are creating an application and this application will interact with the map. So automatically when you create your first application, you have this icon zoom in, zoom out and go to the home extent and show me my current location right now. And we click show current location. It will show you your GPS location or your location based on where you located. So let's go back here to the home page. So this is my location right now. So I'm going to go back to the home. I will stop find my location. And here we have on this corner here on the left side, this is where you are going to configure your application. And on the right side here, this is how your application look like. So after you finish your application, let's say, for example, I'm, I saved it here and I want to launch it. This is how your application will look like after you finish everything and be able to use it as a standalone web application. So as you see this corner here, all this is actually this window right here where I'm marking with my mouse. And here is just this title is not going to be existing in your actual web application when you finish it. And this panel will not exist here when you publish your application. So let's go back here and see what is this four tabs that we have. This is the main four tabs that you will configure your application through it. So here we have the theme. You can change the theme of your application based on any design here. So this is different designs. This is the most default to the design because it gives easy access to widgets when you add widgets here. And you can add controls here as well. And you have the search bar on the top left and everything is normal. But in the same time, you can change this design or the theme based on how based on how you want your application to look like. Here there's a box theme. You can see your layers here in Legend and it's very easy to use. There's different themes and you can choose any one you feel like this is the right one for you. And also, if you want to create something similar to a dashboard, you can create it like this and you can add your widgets here instead of adding it on the top left. So this is a different just themes and you can try different one of them, see how they will look like. But the default one that I use most of the time is this one and this one here called floatable theme. And this is the one I'm going to use right now. So after you choose the theme you want, the second thing you can change the style and the style is just the colors of the icons and the colors of the header. So here, for example, instead of gray, I'm going to make it black, make it green, blue. I can make it however I want it to look like and it will look like this. And also the bars and all the controls here will look with blue. So if I change it to green, everything will change to green. So this is another option that you can choose your own color or you can create your custom color by click on this one and create custom and you can choose any color you want or you can create your color through RGP or you can choose any color from here. So you have a lot of options in the coloring, but again, it just colors the controls and the headers. So let's stay with the gray one. And here you have a layout. This layout defines where your search bar and controls is. And for example, this one, as you see, we have this controls on the top right as here and the search bar here and the other widgets here. We can change that by changing this and click this and it's going to change how your applications look like. This is completely up to you and up to how you want to design your application. There is no specific way that to de design your application here. It's completely up to you. So you can design your application based on where you are going to use it, what theme you want, what colors related to the place where you are creating this application for. So you have to keep in mind that the branding and the colors and the logos also that we will go through uh, when we go come to the attributes where we can change the logo, we can change the header uh, text and everything here we can change. So here again, this is the theme tab. There's only three things you can do here. You can choose your theme, you can choose your color for the style, and you can choose the layout. 
So all, all the time when you make any changes, make sure to save, click save and make sure that this is saying saved. Just in case if you made any changes and you forget to save it, you always keep in mind that whenever you do any changes, you click save before you launch your application again to see the changes you created. So we will go back here and go to the map tab. And here you can change the map that you are using in your application. You can create a new web app builder application that have no map and you can choose the web map from here. Or you can go to your web map that we created and you say, I want to create a web application from here. So let's say, for example, uh, I created this electricity maintenance web map and I created this web application and I'm using it and everything is fine. I came at some point and I wanted to change the map and instead of calling it electricity maintenance, I want to call it electricity maintenance two, and I want to remove these layers and add different layers. Do I need to create the same application again? No, I don't need to do that. All what I need to do is just go to choose web map and here it will show you all the web maps you created before or you just created and you can use any one of them to change the map used in the application. But some configurations that we will see later depends on what layers are in this web map. So in the widgets, we have a filter widget that I'm going to show you later. So you have to keep in mind that if you change the web map for an application that you already created, you need to reconfigure some uh, items and some widgets. And you will get an error that says some configurations cannot maintain, be maintained because you need to reconfigure and configure it again for the new map. So you have to keep in mind when you change the web map that you might need to configure some of the controls again. So I'm not going to change the web map right now. Maybe we can try that out at the end, but you can change it anytime you want from here. Also, you have here the attribute table. This is automatically coming with your application and you can configure it through the widgets where we're going to see right now. And here in your application, this is the actual application. When you finish it or launch it, you can click here and hide and show the attribute table. So here you, you can change the web map, as we said, and here you said the initial extent. So if you want the application to show initial extent for your map different than your web map, so the initial extent for the web map is this, but I can change it and say I want this to be my initial extent for the web application. Doesn't matter what the web app is, so I can use here, use web maps default extent, use current map view, and that will maintain this as my home extent. So if I go anywhere and I click home, it will bring me to this one. Or I can use the one that I already created with the web map initially. So that's the two options here. Here we have customized visible scales. Customized visible scales that you can show the scale in a customized way. Again, this is completely up to you how you, how you want to show your scales and what numbers you want to show in your scale. So you can also limit like uh, the zoom in and the zoom out for the scales. Set refresh interval. In case you have a data or a layer that updates automatically, it's good to have here, say like, I want to have the interval to match one of the layers that I have in the data. So I don't have a data that updates here, but let's say you have a, a layer, feature layer that is using feeds. Like let's say, for example, tracking cars in the field or tracking drivers or somewhere. And every minute you get new data, you need to make sure that you honor each layer in interval is uh, selected or use a single interval for all the updated layer. And you can say how many minutes or half a minute or like two minutes the update will happen. So that means whenever someone is using the application, uh, the, the map will update itself automatically every half a second as we, as we have right here. But I, I don't have any data that is updating on this uh, layers. So I'm going to use this one and I'm going to just make sure again that I click save. So for the map item or for the map uh, tab right here, there's not a lot of options. It's just this one. And um, then we will go after this one to the widget. And the widget is the most... A tab that have a lot of configurations and have all the controls and I'm gonna continue describing what all this about in the next video. So that's it for how to start creating a web app for web app builder using web map, how to configure the theme, the map, and in the next video we'll see what widgets you can use. Thank you so much and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.